All the work that we've done so far has been to create a curved blank that we want to turn to a piece of curved trim. We're actually going to put this profile on this curved blank. This is the really exciting part. We're going to use a steel knife like this and this machine. This is the machine that makes it all happen. In the past 15 years, I've made hundreds, probably thousands of pieces of curved trim, and I've done just about every one of them on an 18-inch Woodmaster planer like this. It's a very durable, very strong machine that's easy to work with. I mean, if a guy from Arkansas can figure out how to use it, I know anybody else can. What we're going to do is put a really simple guide system into the machine. It's two pieces of plywood cut on radiuses. One on the inside radius of the curved trim and one on the outside. They're actually a little bit off of it. This piece of trim is about a half an inch less radius than the inside of the curved blank. And this one's a half an inch more. In a minute, I'm going to show you a really simple way to make these curved guides. By the way, it's extremely important that the guide be thinner than the finished piece of trim so that after the molding has been profiled and it's exiting the machine, the feed rollers are still down on the piece of trim controlling it. When I get my guide set up in the machine, I'll literally be able to feed the blank in one side and stand back and watch a finished piece of curved trim come out the other end. One of the things I really like about the Woodmaster molder is it has variable speed so I can really slow down, take my time, and get great results. And if for some reason I didn't get deep enough on the first pass, all it takes is a crank and I can adjust the level of cut. Each full crank equals about 1 16th of cutting depth. Also, I can run my curved blank through using the variable speed motor without the cutter head going the first time to make sure it's going to track all right, which is really reassuring. I'd much rather be feeding that piece in that I spent maybe an hour, an hour and a half making knowing that it's going to come out the other end fine than putting it in and wondering if I've got everything set up just right. So let's take a look at what we need to do to get set up to run a curved piece of trim through this machine. I'm getting ready to make the guides that will allow us to run this curved blank through the Woodmaster. I've got a piece of about 3 8 inch thick plywood and I'm making a mark 4 inches down from each end. I'm going to align those marks with the outside radius of the piece of trim, the blank we've made. And then use a clamp to hold the piece of plywood to my blank. I don't want to put any kind of a nail or a screw hole in this because it will uh, it show up when we made our curved piece of trim. What I'm going to do is use this router that has a flush trim bit with a bearing over it and as long as this bearing is riding on the outside edge of the trim, I'm going to get an exact copy of this radius, only a half an inch bigger radius on the outside because I've lost a half inch of sawdust. And I'll have to uh, go part way around, then stop and move this clamp. an inside and an outside guide that will take this curved blank and guide it through the machine. We're going to attach those two to a piece of medium density fiber board and then clamp that piece of medium density fiber board into the Woodmaster. This piece of MDF has three guides for me. This is the center line. That will be the lowest point of the rotation of the cutter. And then each of these two lines lines up with the breaker bars on the Woodmaster so that if I have the breaker bars lined up with these two lines, I'll know that my guide is centered up in the machine. The first thing that I'm going to do is make sure that this curve piece is exactly centered between the two lines. Then 
and put one screw right in the middle. Then I'll measure from the outside edge and get it lined up and parallel that way. I always put three screws to hold these guide boards in place so that if even something binds up a little bit and one of the screws were to break, the molding should still continue to run through. Of course, I only started doing that after I had one break and ruined a big piece. And I don't really want this to be absolutely tight. Having a little bit of a gap is a good thing. So all that's really important is at the lowest point of the cutter knife swing that this be centered up and square with the cutter. I always use a single knife because I'm going to be running really slow anyway. It's much cheaper just to buy one knife to run a profile than to have three. However, if for some reason you wanted to run three, the simplest way to set them would be to cut a stick that we're, would set against the outside of the machine and go over to the knife. And then by pushing each knife over against the stick, you'd be setting them equally from the edge. Now, what I'm going to do, and I can usually just do this visually, I'm going to slide this over until these cutter bars line up with those two marks. You always want to remember when you're setting this knife, it would fit in there either direction, but you want to set it up so that the beveled surface is towards the end feed side and the flat side of the knife is towards the out feed side. It's actually going to cut like this. I'm going to take this piece of molding, slide it up underneath. Still going to have to come up a little bit more. And if I didn't have a piece of molding, I would just have to eyeball it in the profile. Eyeball the profile to line up with the guides. Slide quite a ways over. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to line that, line the profile up with our sample piece. Go ahead and raise the bed up a couple of cranks so I can be a little more accurate. So that's right where I want to be. Now I'm going to take this Allen wrench. Thank you, Ken. Now I kind of rest my hand on top of this. You want to be careful because that edge is sharp. But keep a little bit of pressure down so that as this gib tightens up, it doesn't jack one side or the other of the knife around. Now again, this is set up. Remember the thin edge of our casing trim for around a window or door is always going to be to the inside of the radius. There are some times when you make a piece of curved molding where you need it to go the opposite direction. Just remember which way the piece of molding is going to be going when you set up your guides. Looks like to get our profile right, we're going to need to come I think that's going to be real close to the depth. We'll give it about a half a crank, maybe a third of a crank more. Since I'm only using one profile knife, I'm going to need to set these counterbalance weights in place. And line them up. And boy, it's really important to make absolutely certain that you get all these tightened in well. And if you're running a whole lot of molding, if you've run, oh, I don't know, for a couple hours or so, you may want to stop and just recheck and make sure you've got everything tight. 
And remember too, don't ever run the machine without the hood in place. Now that I've got the knife set, I'm gonna go ahead and do a test run with only the feed rollers going. Now, it might be a good idea. This bed board had quite a bit of wax on it because most of the time when I'm running trim, I'll wax the bed board. But if you're doing a brand new setup or a brand new bed board, you might want to take some paraffin or candle wax and just wax the bed board. Okay. Now that the knife's set, I'm going to do a trial run with only the feed rollers going. Make sure that the knife's in the up position so that it doesn't dig into the blank when you're running it through on the test run. If the board happens to get hung up during the test run, just count the number of cranks that you go backwards, probably 10 or 15 to lower the bed, and you can get back to your starting position by just making the same number of cranks coming back up and you'll still be set and ready to go. Okay, we've run all the tests, we've set our guides, now it's time for the really big moment. As I said, I've made hundreds, probably thousands of pieces of curved trim, but I never get tired. Matter of fact, it still excites me to see that beautiful piece of trim coming out the back end of the molder. I'm going to go ahead and put some wing nuts on to lock the hood down, and we'll be ready to go. Remember, don't ever plug the machine in for the cutter head until you've got the hood back on the machine. I'm going to be running pretty slow when I machine this piece, probably no more than four or five feet a minute. I want to get the very best cut I can by getting the most knife cuts per inch. It's extremely important to have good dust collection because if the chips don't get sucked out, that out feed roller will actually press the chips back into the profile. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this material, don't forget to like and subscribe.